And we are live. Welcome to the latest Danger and Play podcast. This one is going to be a little bit of a change of pace, and here is why. A lot of readers have reached out to me and asked, Hey man, I know you're really introverted. I want to know what are your game tips about introversion? What are your life tips about introversion? How do you overcome being introverted? And I thought, you know, this would be a lot of fun because um, Jay is like the most extroverted guy I know, and I'm probably the most introverted guy I know. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to do a talk about introversion, and this will be kind of like A-side. And then when I'm with Jay this weekend, we can talk about extroversion, and we can sort of wrap back and forth. What's it like being an extrovert? How can an introvert be more extroverted, etc.? So first of all, I would like to kind of talk about introversion and what it is and what it is not. Introversion is not misanthropy. Introversion is not, I fucking hate people, I don't like people, people suck, I'm better than everyone else. That is that is an introversion. A lot of people think, well, I don't like people, therefore I'm an introversion. No, that is an introversion. Introversion is not social anxiety. If you say, because I'm going to talk a little bit later about how you need to, to stand out as an introvert. If you say, well, I would never wear red pants out to a club because I wouldn't feel comfortable. Well, that, that's got nothing to do with being introverted. That just means you're a fucking idiot or like... You read somewhere that you can only wear blue jeans, and if you don't wear blue jeans, you're gay. That is that is nothing to be an introvert. So what is an introvert? Introversion is, if you look up the big five personality inventory, Ocean, you look at, is a person introverted? Is he extroverted? Is he an anxious? Is he neurotic? Is he open to new experiences? Is he conscientious or not conscientious? And it all comes from like Carl Jung, who is probably my favorite psychologist, and we'll talk about him later, but... Jung created these kind of archetypes, and the archetypes are sort of categories that define every person. So if you take a million people, some are going to be introverted, some are going to be extroverted. So since it comes from Jung, we'll just go all the way back and, and use his definitions. And he defines introversion as an attitude type characteristic by orientation and life through subjective psychic contents. And extroversion is an attitude type characterized by concentration of interest on the external object. What does that mean? Well, an introvert lives in his head and an extrovert kind of lives in the outside world. And this creates a lot of challenges for people because we tend to view the world a little bit differently. Introversion doesn't mean that you're shy. Introversion doesn't mean that you can't be outgoing or that you can't talk to people. And I'm the perfect example of that. A lot of people say, whoa, man, how can you say you're introverted? Like, when you go out, you're like the fucking wildest dude, and you completely don't abide by social conventions, and you'll say the most out-of-bound things, and you're completely, like, without a filter. But you say an introvert, what's up with that? And I said, well, yeah, but, like, you're seeing me for four hours. You're not seeing me the other 20 hours of the day, or you're not seeing me the rest of the week. I've gone three days where the only time I talked to a person was when I would go to get coffee and I would make my order and I just lived completely inside my head and I can absolutely totally do it and as a matter of fact I like really like doing it <clears throat> so that's I'm an introvert and that's why whether they'll find they'll define an introvert as somebody who um do you need to recharge when you're around other people man you take an extrovert and they'll go out and they'll talk to all these people and they'll be bouncing back and forth and blah 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 and they get done and they're just like wow that's exhilarating I, you know I want to like go to the fucking next place and me, I'll go out and I'll talk and I'll be social and this and that and everybody will love me and they'll think, wow, this guy's so fucking charismatic. And I get in my car and I'm like, oh man, dude, like I'm not doing shit tomorrow. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm just going to like read and I'm going to write. I need to recharge. So that's like the rough heuristic of how you can tell if you're introverted or extroverted. So now that we got a little bit of background laid down, let's just sort of talk about what it's like to be an introvert. Well, if you're an introvert, I have some bad news for you. Do not expect any sympathy from the extroverts. You are a minority. I would say that the statistics say one in four introverted. So that means you're outnumbered three up by three people to one. And it means that you're a minority. And if you're a woman or some other protected minority, you can raise a big fuss and society will pay, pay attention to you. But we're not a protected minority. The extroverts just aren't going to sympathize with you. Secondly, extroverted, extroverts aren't aren't necessarily mean-spirited, they just don't understand you. And what you have to understand is they're not going to make an effort to understand you. Just, they're not. Get over it. Learn how to live in an extroverted world. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is how can you be an introvert 
living in an extroverted world. How can you meet girls if you're an introvert? How can you get along better with your friends when you're an introvert? How can you make more business connection, connections when you're an introvert? All right, so let's talk about sort of like game for the introvert and how can you meet girls when you are introverted. The advice I'm going to give isn't going to be the advice a lot of people want to hear because as I alluded to in the previous podcast, people say, well, I would, ne- I would never do that because I'm introverted. Well, no, if you, if you won't do what I'm about to tell you to do and it's not because you're an introvert, it's because you're like Joe Cool and you grew up in the Midwest and you're not going to do anything that is zany or out there that isn't totally conventional. That just means you're fucking boring. It doesn't mean you're an introvert. So if you don't want to do it, I don't care. I'm not God. Do what you're going to do. But don't try to blame your introversion. All right, if you're an introvert, you got to stand out. And what I mean is, if you're not going to be the guy who's over there talking to everybody and, and who doesn't necessarily have the energy to go talk to 20 different people, that means you have to you have to stand out. If you look around at the bar, the club, or the mixer, or the dinner party that you're at, and you look like every other motherfucker, you've lost the game. Because every other motherfucker there is an extrovert, and they're all talking, and you're the introvert kind of standing there in the corner. So you need to be a little mysterious. You need to stand out in a positive way, and there's a lot of ways to stand out. If you're, like, ridiculously good-looking, perfect. You go with that. Most of us aren't ridiculously good-looking. We're on the spectrum of attractiveness varying from slightly below average to slightly above average, and that means you really have to work on your style, and... You don't do the dumb, the so-called PUA peacocking stuff. But whenever I go out, I look really good. And very rarely does anybody look like me. I have a pair of red pants. I have blue pants. I have corduroys. I generally wear boat shoes that are brightly colored. I wear red shoes. And red is always going to stand out. If you can wear a red article of clothing, and especially red shoes, because shoes, girls always look at your shoes, you're going to stand out. If you're wearing red jeans... Um, brown boat shoes and a cool shirt, you're going to stand out. Because why? Everybody else is wearing what I call the uniform. The uniform is nicest kind of jeans and a button-down shirt. Or maybe they're even wearing a suit. But I would say that I stand out more than people who wear a suit. So what you got to do is you really got to work on your fashion. And you have to dress up. And the way I, the way I put it is you got to go gay minus one. What that means is you, you don't want to look gay. But look at how the gay people dress. They're a little bit more flamboyant. They stand out more. See how they dress? Dial it down a little bit. And then you're in the neighborhood. So now, because you stand out, you don't have to go out and meet everybody. A lot of times people come up to you. Girls have said many times, and this has been witnessed by everybody who's ever gone out with me, that, um, oh my God, I love those pants. Where did you get those pants? Or I, I love that article of clothing. So now they've sort of opened you. And then you can talk to them. So you're not wasting your energy going to talk to 20 different people. You're bringing people to you. You're sort of serving up bait. And that's what fashion is going to do. Now, what's the right fashion? I don't know, man. I really, I really like Tanner's work at masculine style. A lot of people say that that is too um, hipsterish. Whatever. Um, Chris at Good Looking Loser has a good sense of style in terms of it's like a very it's that edgy look, that sort of LA edgy look. If you, if you got like a nice body, you can pull off the, the, the deep V-necks. And the graffiti stuff on the shirt, uh, a necklace, maybe a bracelet, something that makes you look like you're not like every other dork out there. That is really going to make a huge difference for you. That is going to be probably the single best thing you can do for your game. If you're a regular podcast listener, you know what I'm about to say next. And that is going to be you should maximize your looks however possible and you should maximize your body. If you're a good looking guy and you have a very masculine look, you're going to fall into the archetype of the strong, silent type. Think about the the John Wayne's type. If John Wayne walks into a bar and he's got that hyper-masculine look or Clint Eastwood with that hyper-masculine look, and he stands over the corner, people are thinking, oh, that guy's creepy. Why isn't he talking to anyone else? He looks fucking masculine. He looks like a man. And that is definitely going to help your game is to cultivate that strong, silent look. How do you cultivate it? I mean, if you're a little guy, you need to put on some muscle, you know, which everybody needs to do anyway. You have broad shoulders. You have a narrow waist. You take good care of yourself. You have good fashion. Suddenly, your head and shoulders above everyone else. And by the way, if you're extroverted, that works too. Your head and shoulders above every, everybody else. And now you're going to get people to come to you. Become a master of body language. Know how to master your body language. 
Know how to stand in a way that calls attention to yourself. Know how to take up space in the venue. Because again, that's going to make you look more masculine. That is going to make it look like your introversion isn't a weakness. Because a lot of people think if you don't talk a lot, then you're weak or you're a wallflower. Again, it goes back to the myth that you're, you're shy. Oh, look at the guy standing over in the corner. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. He's afraid. And that's kind of beta behavior. But if you're over in the corner by yourself and you're kind of hanging out with your friends while they do what extroverts do, which is just talk and banter, and you're just kind of hanging out, but you look good, you take care of yourself, you got a cool haircut, you got a good fashion sense, your body's good, you know how to handle you know how to handle your body language so that you're just not standing around with your feet crossed at the ankles, then suddenly people are going to be like, well, who, who's that guy? You know, and then that that creates that mystery. The girls will say, like, who, who's that guy? Why isn't he talking to anyone else? You know, well, is he not talking to anyone else because he has a girlfriend or because he thinks he's above it all? Uh, you know, I don't know. So what will happen a lot of times with me is girls will come up and say, well, you, you know, you don't like look like you're having fun. And they just they're wondering well, why is this like fucking like big, relatively good looking guy just kind of standing over in the corner, not really engaging anybody. And they want to know because I've created that mystery. I've created that allure. Now they want to they want to talk to me. So I don't have to go into a bar and make 20 different cold approaches, which is just draining to me. Instead, I'm over there in, in my red pants with, uh, you know, taking up space and looking fucking cool. And now they're coming over. Well, well, what's up with him? Because girls, what? They don't want to be ignored, but they don't want to talk to dorks. So you're the cool guy, the cool, mysterious guy in the corner who's ignoring them. And they're going to want to find out what your deal is. Now, some of you are listening and, well, your body language, you just kind of said use good body language. What does that mean? Well, I, there are books on body language. I've reviewed some books on body language, and maybe I'll link to them in the blog post. But here are a few tips. Don't stand with your arms crossed. If you, When your arms are crossed, you're saying to the world, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm going to stand here over by myself like Oscar the Grouch. When you, your feet, you want your feet to be relatively... Um, spread out. You don't want to stand with your feet close together. And, and that all goes back to just basic ape psychology. If your feet are close together, that means you're not taking up territory. If your legs are spread apart, that means you're spread out. You're taking up territory because you're the, you're the alpha gorilla. Now, obviously, you don't want to stand with your feet all the way spread apart. Generally, you want them shoulder width apart. You can turn them kind of contrapasta is the way they put it. One foot pointing out and the other foot pointing in the other direction so that your feet kind of form a 90 degree angle which uh they form a 90 degree angle that helps it, it isn't a perfect formula but the idea is that you're taking up some space and you're not just standing there with your with your legs together it, it, it's like stand there and imagine that you have a fucking cock and balls you know don't squeeze your cock and balls under your asshole like a transvestite and tuck your dick have your legs spread apart so that your balls can hang low Make and hold eye contact. If you're standing there, you look cool, you're dressed well, and a girl walks by and she makes eye contact and you look down, you have lost the game. The game is that when a girl makes eye contact with you, you hold it until she lowers her eyes. And if she doesn't let go of the gaze, you smirk and you beckon her over to you. How do you beckon over to her? I like the good old-fashioned finger move. You lift your arm up, you hold it out in front of you, and you just use the index finger and you flag her towards you. People think it's things that looks cheesy. I've done it so many times that you wouldn't believe it. Now, a lot of times they won't just come right to it because they have to sort of save their dignity or be cool or whatever is going on in their head. But it'll work. They'll come over. Trust me. Learn how to ask good questions. I linked to a book a while ago that I think a lot of people should have bought who didn't. And I think it's called 100 Ways to Break the Ice. And the idea is that there are certain ways that you can ask a question, certain questions you can ask that can get people rambling on. So what I like to do is I ask really pointed but open-ended questions and people will just ramble. Let the extroverts ramble. Let them do what they do best, which is talk, and then chime in every now and then, but not as much. Generally, with the conversation, there's like 60-40 rules. So if you want to develop empathy with the person and get that person on your side, you let them talk 60% of the time and then you talk 40%. But that assumes you're an extrovert and you want to talk 40%. A lot of times with me, it's 75, 25, 80, 20. I let them talk and talk and talk and then I ask questions. Now, the danger is that they'll say, well, what are you, a reporter? If you just pepper them with questions, you sound like a reporter. It isn't cool. It doesn't create natural flow in the conversation. But if you talk and, and they 
they talk about, oh, I just took this trip to Costa Rica and then this and that, then you can bring up an anecdote. Oh, yeah, I remember when I did this. And, and guess what, dude? Um, girls are going to interrupt you anyway. You can talk to a girl and say, yeah, I remember the time I was at a bookstore and I saw a firefight. And she'll be like, books? Oh, I like books. Even though it's, it's Fifty Shades of Grey or something. So th they're just waiting for their turn to talk anyway. So the idea is to keep the flow going. Don't ask another question. Oh, so where are you from? Don't ask boring questions like that. Where are you from? What brings you here? What what you what's your major in college? What's this? Those are those are boring questions. You gotta learn to ask like cool ass questions. You know, um, look at look at something they're wearing or um, piece of jewelry they have. Say so, you know that necklace you have reminds me of such and such, and create some kind of like anecdote. And then you're not just some other dork asking the same boring questions that everyone else asks. Let's say that you're standing there and the girl comes up because you look good. You don't look like every other dork. You're not wearing the dumb uniform and she says, Man, you know, you don't look like you're having a good time. That's when you put your introversion to good use. And you, you put the mystery to use. And you say, well, you know, look around at these people, you know. She, well, what do you mean? Say, I don't know. Everybody just looks like everyone else, you know. What, are you just like all these other people? Boom. Now you have her hooked. So, well, I'm not like every other person. And you say, well, I just feel like they're just kind of conformist. They're all doing the same thing. I don't even know. Do I even really want to, like, get to know these people? So now she's kind of on the defensive, and she's going to want to prove to you how cool she is. So you're making her qualify herself. And the reason she's qualifying herself is because you stood there and did all those, like, great things as an introvert. So she's going to start talking about how she's cool or that she does stuff other people don't do. And that's how you put everything together. And when you talk to women, you're going to, like, have cool shit to say. And if I had to say, like, a rule, I would say, you know, have – when you talk, have something cool to say. Because since you're not talking as much as extroverts, you can't have as much filter or filler or white noise or garbage talk. What you have to say has to be cool. So – when you're an introvert, you need to be reading books on body language. You need to be reading uh, works of great literature like Tolstoy. You need to be reading um, Pride and Prejudice, I think, is a book I recommend to a lot of people because it teaches you about subtle status cues and henpacking and how women interact with one another and how they denigrate one another. And, and you can learn a lot about game by learning how women interact with, with other people. And uh, There was even a study recently that showed how people who read more fiction are actually – more effective in social social situations, and that makes total sense because think about it this way. A, a fiction book is just nothing but a work of nonfiction. Some writer sat down and in his mind said, this is how people interact with one another. So the, the writer's views on the world influenced his, his fictional characters. So instead of saying, well, I'm not, I don't read fiction because I'm too cool to read fiction, or I only read nonfiction because I'm haughty, and again, that doesn't mean you're an introvert, it just means you think you're better than everyone else, it, look at fiction as being um, nonfiction. So now you're talking to girls, you have cool shit to say, you look good, maybe they're coming up to you, and suddenly it doesn't look like introvert introversion is really an obstacle for the game, does it? And In a lot of ways, it can become an advantage because... A complaint a lot of people have is that they feel like people aren't listening to them. They feel like people are interrupting them. But because you're an introvert, you don't want to like you don't want to carry the conversation. You want women. You want the woman to talk about herself, and she's gonna love it, and you're gonna love it. So that is how you can use introversion to your advantage in meeting girls. So if you have any more questions, post them in the podcast. And now we're gonna talk about. Sort of like you're introvert in an extrovert world. You're with your friends. You're at a party. You're hanging out. Like what's going on? And here's what's going on. You're there and people are coming up to you. And if you're an introvert, you can relate. Hey, hey, man. Hey, are you having a good time? And you're like, yeah, dude. Like why do you think I'm not having a good time? Oh, well, you're just kind of standing over here in the corner not talking to anyone. Or you're on your phone or you're doing this. And, and they feel like you're not having fun. And that's because extroverts don't understand you, and they're not going to understand you. So what you need to do as an introvert is you need to be proactive. If you're at a party, every now and then you just poke your head in and say, Hey man, great party. I'm having a great time. And then they're not going to be worried about you. So if you, th if you think about it, like really, the extroverts, they want you to have a good time. So it isn't – they're not coming over maliciously like nagging you about why you're not having fun. They're, 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 they want you to have fun, man, and they don't see you talking to anybody. So in their little – extroverted mind you're not having fun 
So be proactive. Hey, man, I'm having a great time. This is a cool party. Or, or if you're out with your friends, say, hey, whoever thought of like going to this place, say, hey, man, I'm really glad you thought of coming here. This is a really great idea. I really like this spot. Say, I really like whatever, the decor. It doesn't matter. Come up with something. And then they, then they realize you're cool. Everything's good. They're not going to worry. So that's just how you get along better in social situations. Um, another good thing to do is you need to like warm up before you go out. Me, I can go a day and I don't talk to anybody, and I'm like cool with it. I'll read and I'll write and all the time of my life, and then I'll go out and be like, bleh, 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 you, you know, because your vocal cords need warmed up. If you've ever been on choir or know anyone on choir, you, you people just don't go sing. There's a whole warm up you have to do and you have to run your body through. So if if you're like me and you're living inside your head and you're just talking to yourself then you need to warm up your vocal cords. You need to just make a small talk. When you go over the coffee, don't just say, oh, you know, I'll have the, the D, I get decaf. Oh, decaf librarians blend. Thanks. That might be all I'll say. Hey, man, I like your shirt. Oh, you, oh if it's a girl, um, look at her eye makeup. Oh, I like your eye makeup. Because that's something nobody ever points out to them, and that's something like girls are really into. When they do that little cat eye thing, um always point that out and that like blows your mind then like oh yeah thank you blah 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 then they're talking you spit a line back to them and you're not trying to like pick them up you're just warming yourself up now so now you're getting flow right like i'll review this book finding flow what you're doing is you're warming up and you're getting into your flow boom 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 you're talking you're talking your vocal cords are warmed up you're getting that momentum so then when you go out and you, you happen to see the first pretty girl you're not fucking stunted you're warmed up, you're talking, and, and everything's cool. Another thing to be careful of is if you're introverted and an extrovert talks to you, sometimes you just you feel like it's rude. And you're like, what, 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 what? And what they don't realize is an introvert, you're having a conversation in your head, man. You're just thinking about all kinds of like cool shit, man. And when they talk to you, they just completely interrupted your train of thought and like how dare they. And to an introvert, it's the same thing as if you went up and you saw two people talking and you just stood right in the middle of it and said, look at me. But again, they don't understand you. They're not going to understand you. Recognize that they're not knowingly interrupting you. They don't know what they're doing, man. As, as Jesus said, you know, is being crucified. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So forgive the extroverts. They know not what they do. And if anything, it comes from a good place. They actually want to talk and they want to engage you. <laughs> they, they just don't realize that you're perfectly happy not being engaged. When you're in a group of people and they're all talking, what I like to do is I call it you're, you're knitting them all together. So say there's like five people and some guy's talking about how he went to high school at such and such or played high school football. Well, here's how you work your magic as an introvert. If there's four people and Tommy's talking about how he played high, fo high school football, you look over and, hey, did you play any sports, George, in, in high school or college or whatever? And then George will start talking. And then when George talks, maybe you, you link in Tony. Hey, Tony, yeah, I, I heard that you did such and such. And now Tony's talking. And, well, what do you guys think? Team sports or individual sports? Like, which do you like better and why? So now you've got everybody talking. And you're kind of like the center of attention in a way because the, the, the metaphor I use is you're like the director, right? The, the actors are the, like the extroverts. They're the ones talking to one another. But the director, he's like important too and he's got power too because he's the one – keeping everybody talking and everything flowing. So th think of it as if there are four people or five people in a group and one person's talking, you're thinking, well, how can I sew all these people together? How can I knit them all together? How can I get them to the, like one cohesive whole? And then you get them all talking about themselves and talking to each other. And, and, they're, and they're happier because they're talking about themselves. You're happy because you're not talking about yourself as much. And they think you're like the coolest guy in the world because here's a game to play sometime. Talk to somebody and see how long you can get that person to talk until they ask you a question about yourself. I've played this before and I've had people go three hours without asking me anything about myself. In fact, one time I, I played this game with a person that was way back in college. I don't know if I invented it or not, but I, I think I invented it. And I was talking to my college roommate and he was the most boring dude. Fuck, dude. He was telling me like the most boring. He was a good guy, but boring. And it was so boring that I stared at him and, and to keep myself engaged in the conversation, I was like looking at his hair and I was pretending that he was like a werewolf because he had kind of shaggy hair and he had a weird looking face. I imagined he was a werewolf because that was the only way that I could not fall asleep. This motherfucker went on for three hours, didn't ask me shit about myself. And he got up and he goes, oh my God, 
Mike, I love talking to you. You are so smart. You are such a great conversationalist. And I went to bed just shaking my head laughing, thinking, yeah, but I just let you talk about yourself. And because I let you talk about yourself, you just think I'm the greatest guy in the world. So that's another way as an introvert, you like you leverage your abilities and your inclinations. You don't necessarily want to talk to people, um, but you learn how to be an excellent conversationalist. You learn how to ask great follow-up questions. You and your head are playing a game. Hey, oh, this guy hasn't asked me anything about myself. It's been like an hour. This guy has told me his life story. This girl has told me her life story, and she hasn't asked me anything about myself. And th they love that shit. So, so that's like a, a cool game you can play, and then it can hone your skills as a conversationalist. And it, it can also help you do what introverts do best, which is think about things while they're talking. So if they're talking, you're thinking. They're telling you a story about something, and you're thinking about some maybe some anecdote you know. And then you can think about a follow-up question based on the anecdote you know. And you can have a, a lot of fun with that game. Another game you can play as an introvert is how much detail you can get out of people. I've had people tell me shit about them being molested and just the most... Th things that they they have said, oh my god, I can't believe I've told you that. I've never told anybody but my therapist that. I, I never tell anybody that. So if you're an introvert, you know, get them talking. Ask follow-up questions. Show, in show interest. And, and again, you're, you're using your skills as being able to, to move your head while they talk. They're talking and in your head. You're thinking, oh, she said something about her growing up in childhood and the cornfields of Iowa. And now she's actually talking about living in L.A., but I'm going to loop her back to about the cornfields. And I'm going to say, well, what's the, the craziest thing in the cornfields? Oh, were the, were the cornfields ever haunted? Did you ever, like, go out at midnight into the cornfields and think that, like, ghosts were coming to get you or something frivolous or something funny? And she's thinking, oh, this is so much fun talking to this guy. And the reason she thinks that is because you're, um, you're looping everything back. Same thing with the groups. You're, you're looping everything back because your brain is running. You're coming up with cool follow-up questions, and you're, and you're leveraging stuff. All right, bros, this is feeling a lot like a lecture, and it's definitely not my podcasting style. My podcasting style is not to ramble on and pontif pontificate. If I want to pontificate, I will do that on my blog, and I will write and pontificate. I like reader questions. I like the banter back and forth with Jay. I, if I wanted to be a college professor, I could have been a college professor. I don't want to be. So hopefully some of these tips have helped you. I would love to hear your questions. I would love to hear your comments. You can tell me that I mispronounced Carl Jung, Carl Jung's name. I don't care if I mispronounced it. Um, but you can, correct me in, you can correct me in the comments. If you have more questions, let me know. Let me know what your questions are for Jay. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be doing a bunch of podcasts. We have an awesome podcast on TRT that's going to drop this one is like advanced high-level TRT stuff. We cover all the questions you'd ask and more um, on aromatose inhibitors. We talk about serums. We talk about how frequent your injections can be. We talk about daily dose subcutaneous injections with different types of testosterone esters. It, it's really going to blow you guys away. You're really, really going to like it. We also have an interview with the guy who is currently on the cover of Iron Man magazine, and we're going to talk about training with him and his specific trial type of training. So it's going to be fun. Hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Let me know your comments. Give me a bunch of questions. That way for the next podcast, I don't have to just talk like I'm a college professor. That's not fun for me, and hopefully it is not fun for you. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys. Well, I will talk to you guys soon.